Will Goldstein here, thekingscourt.com. Again, you can always subscribe down there by hitting that button down there in that corner. Also, I'm a musician, so you can always check out my music, um, songbooks, uh, digital albums. Uh, there's a lot of links at thekingscourt.com. So getting on with this uh, book here, uh, C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity. So I'm now starting the uh, third book, which is called Christian Behavior. This is the first video in this series, The Three Parts of Morality. So there's a story about a schoolboy, and he was asked what he thought about God. And, and this was his response. Well, God's a sort of person who's always snooping around, checking to see what you're doing, and if anyone is enjoying himself, and if he is, well, he's out there to stop you. And then he goes on to say, well, morality in many people's minds is something that stops people from having a good time. He goes on to say there's all sorts of things that may seem right to a person, but they really don't work. So if you want to really get somewhere, um, to a, personal, a particular location, you can guess and hope you'll find it eventually. <laughs> or you can use a map. He, he's saying morality is a map. And it's quite true that moral perfection is an ideal, he says, and that nobody can really achieve it fully, in, at least in this life. But then he goes on to say that every kind of perfection is for humans really just an ideal. You know, for example, music, you know, um, God is the master musician. Uh, we are discovering the beauty that's in, the, potentially there for us when we write music. Or the painter is um, trying to duplicate the master artist in God, in his creation. So. He's saying, goes on to say, the perfect behavior may be unattainable, but he goes on, also goes on to say that it is quite necessary as an ideal. In other words, if <laughs> my saying I've always used is, uh, if you sh if you shoot for the stars, you might at least hit the moon. In other words, you know, if there's if you're not really don't have some idea of where you're going to. It's an elevated idea, you're not going to get very far. So every moral failure is going to cause trouble. It's going to cause trouble possibly to other people, and it's certainly going to cause trouble for the individual. And there are two ways that um, humans can go wrong in this world. And the first one is when humans either drift apart from one another or when they collide with one another. And if they do that, then of course there's likely to be damage. And the other is when humans inside, something goes wrong inside the human or the individual. So and then he goes on to say that you can get the idea if you think of a uh, uh, fleet of ships that are sailing on a voyage and if if that and they're sailing in formation and uh, if they want to have success on their voyage it really is only going to happen if a couple of things if they don't collide with each other and if each one of the ships is seaworthy so then he goes on but I'm going to add just a little bit there so he's talking about um, well, morality and the nature of love and, and, you know, each person has developed um, to some extent more or less in the idea of love. In other words, some people are very kind, very generous, really care about you, um, are out to help you. Um, they're very considerate, they're very, they're always talk to you respectfully, and other people are quite abusive, they're out to use you or abuse you. So in this world we have all sorts. And the idea he's trying to get is the 
in friendships or marriages, the, the, the more that each participant is to a higher degree of more moral character, the more that friendship or that marriage is going to uh, be a success. Um, if you're in a marriage or a friendship where there's a lot of manipulation, <laughs> Uh, like I said, abuse or using people or um, power trips or vengeance, well, there's going to be a lot of friction there and not, not, a, not, not a high degree of moral development. So if you think of a humanity as a band of musicians playing a tune, each player needs to play in tune if they want to have <laughs> interesting and beautiful music, and they need to come in at the right time to combine with others, otherwise you have a cacophony. So we should um, ask, um, getting back to the idea of the voyage with the ships, where is this fleet going to? Or what is the piece of music that we're trying to play? And he goes on to say that morality is concerned with three things, and firstly, fair play, and harmony between the individuals, and secondly, it's with tidying up inside each person. And thirdly, the general purpose of human life. And what is man made for? Almost all people at all times have agreed on some basic things. And in theory, that humans ought to be kind and helpful to one another. It is natural to begin with that uh, uh, unless we as individuals tidy up inside, um, not much success is going to happen. And if you think it is, you're only deceiving yourself. So to have success, we need some courage and unselfishness in individuals that are trying to work together in a system so that it can work properly. You, you can't make men or women, good by law. Without good men, you can't have a good society. So we must think of mor morality inside each individual so that we can work together to create a, a better society. Obviously, some set societies do have moral character and as a whole, and that society, for example, the history of the United States of America has been that is based on Christian principles. Okay, in other societies, not so much. So religion involves a series of statements presented as facts. Well, if you, whenever you're making those kinds of statements, then um, if it's true, then there's a set of conclusions that will follow. But if it's false, there's a completely different set of conclusions. Christianity asserts that every individual um, human being is going to live forever. Now I'm going to stop there for a second. He uh, obviously believes that, and I'm not saying whether I do or do, don't believe that. Um, that's a very debatable issue. Uh, for example, um, when somebody becomes in Christian theology, when somebody, or in the Bible, when somebody becomes Christian, they receive eternal life. Well, then you might ask, well, if they don't become a Christian, then they don't receive eternal life, then why is he living forever? The answer to that is <laughs> in Christian theology, um, or at least in some, is hell and damnation, um, and that exists, but what is it? Um, especially since you think of the idea of um, each second death or eternal death um, and uh, Hades being thrown into the lake of fire well then what is, what is that? And then he goes on to say there are many things that, um, that are not worth bothering about and then he says well if I was only going to live to be 70 years old then maybe I don't need to bother about it I'm going to die anyway and that's the end of it all but if I'm going to live forever then maybe these things are really worth considering. So, uh, if we were to think about morality, one must think about um, three different departments, he calls it, and um, the relationships between man and man, and also the things inside each man, 
and then the relationship between man and the power that made him, which is namely God. So then he goes on to say that there are many differences between Christian and non-Christians and the idea of morality. And then he states that for the rest of this book, the whole series, he's going to be presenting the Christian point of view as if it is true.